Today I wanted to touch on starter bubbles, which are really important, but which I feel a lot of people kind of view um, as just something that you have to do in order to build up more material to actually start the piece, right? Like the, the piece actually begins on that final gather or the third or fourth gather, and everything that happens before then is just prep work. That just kind of has to get done but doesn't really matter. And I think that this is directly contrary to one of the most fundamentally important things of the glass blowing process, which is the idea that everything is connected. So if you start off with something, then that directly informs what you'll have next and what will come after that and will come after that and so on, so on, so on, all the way down the line. And oftentimes you can see details about the end result and how successful it was and how easy or hard it might have been to, to create that thing reflected in the very beginnings of the process, namely the starter bubble. And you can see this a lot of times with how problems will build on themselves. So the you know, idea there is like if you have a, like a starter bubble and let's say you blow it uh, really uneven, really badly, so it's like you know, real, uh, real thin on one side of the pipe and like really thick on the other side of the pipe. Well, the idea here is that you just put yourself on a path and whatever comes next will reflect what you have right here. So you can throw another gather on top of something like this and you won't really have changed the whole situation. Toss two, three, four gathers on it and oftentimes this bottom part where it already didn't want to blow out, it's already thick or already probably cold or already uh, moving more in the other direction, doesn't really have any incentive to do anything different even though you have more material. This other side where it's already thinner, bubble already wanted to expand there for whatever reason, it's already moving more that direction, it'll tend to blow up even even more in that direction, right? So instead of things becoming less and less important as you get more gathers on it, the little details can oftentimes become more and more important because of how they influence what comes directly after. So that's why um, starter bubbles I think are so important. And w in order to, to really craft the starter bubble to put you on a path to you know, some sort of successful end result, there's a couple of things that you have to really consider. First of which is the gather. Now, I made another video where I'll talk about how to gather and you know, things to watch out for, how to do it really nicely. So I'm not gonna talk too much about that here. You can go back and watch that um, if you like, but just suffice it to say that a good gather that's you know, the real nice shape, that's real even, that's tied into the rod well, all that is fundamentally different from a gather that's like meh, <laughs> like that, where it's all bulked up on the rod and uneven thicknesses and temperatures and you gotta really work in order to get it to this spot where you have to heat it and marver it out and reshape it and reheat it and, and you know, mess around with it a whole lot just to get it to the point um, where you have a, something that's even and, and you can actually put a bubble into it. And all of the manipulations that you oftentimes have to do in order to get from here to here kind of lose that thread that runs through the piece. So, Really good gathers are very important. So once you actually have a gather, there's a couple primary forces that really work their way into what comes next. One's heat, one's shape. Sorry about heat first. So as a general principle with heat, you wanna to try to work within the zone where you're not too cold and not too hot, but it's very easy to end up at either extreme, especially as a beginner where you, know, you might gather and it takes a certain amount of time to like cool off the pipe and get to the bench and find the block you're looking for and then you block it so much that you just suck all the heat out of it. It's no good, right? Too cold. But it's also possible to work with the glass when it's too hot. If the glass is moving faster than you can really respond and control it, then you might need to tone it back a little bit. So right when you come out, you might have a, a decent gather, but if you hit that marver when the glass is so hot that every little pause or twist that you might make is amplified and the glass just sort of spirals out into like some uneven, long, stringy thing, and then when you hold it up, it's flopping back on itself and you know, the bubble like shoots in in a split second before you even have a chance to like see what's happening, it's all too hot. Try to find this intermediate zone where the glass has movement and it's holding heat, but you're not on like the, the edge either way. So that's where you start off. Really try to figure out how to get yourself in that zone where you have control of the glass. And once you've got to that point, start looking even closer at the glass to make sure that you understand the temperature in it, which is not always even. And we know from like day one in the hot shop that glass moves easiest where it's hottest. So as an example here, you might get a gather, but on a really cold pipe that's sucking heat out of the glass next to it. 
It's making all this stuff colder, leaving like the end hot and the glass next to the pipe cold. Then when you blow into the pipe, that bubble is going to really slowly expand through this part that's cold, but as it gets towards the hotter and hotter part and eventually kind of breaks free into it, boom, it's going to blow up really big and thin. And so you have uh, thick right next to the pipe and then thin off the end. And just like we talked about the bubble when it's off center, this will tend to reinforce itself. If you get another gather on it, it still wants to blow thin right at the bottom. And this can happen on the other side. If you have a pipe that's really, really hot and feeding heat into uh, the glass that's off the end of it, then the bubble is more likely to blow up right next to the pipe and maybe you end up with it real thin next to the top and thick at the bottom, which once again has a tendency to reinforce itself. So, you know, thin bottom, thin top. And this should give you an idea that by varying the little details about what you have at the beginning of it, you know, you can really make it easy for you to get, let's say, you know, a thin lip and a thick bottom. But you want to control it. And uh, that all starts with really looking at the temperature of the glass and making sure that you understand where the heat is. And there's a lot of ways to throw it off. The pipe is a really obvious example, but there can be a number of other ways. Like if you um, gather the glass and you block it over and over so it gets really cold and then you reheat it, oftentimes it doesn't heat up evenly. Or if as you're heating it up you aren't heating deep enough and you're only putting the tip of the glass in the glory hole so that uh, that's getting hot and the part by the pipe is staying cold. Like well, That's another way. There's a ton of ways that you can make mistakes, but just really look at what you have, understand that you have it for a reason, <laughs> and so look at what you did right before then and you hopefully get your way onto the path where the glass gets more and more even. Now once you get the glass to an even temperature, you can gather it and treat it evenly enough on a decent temperature pipe so that everything is sort of a uniform temperature, then we need to talk about shape, which is vitally important as well. And the idea there is that when you blow into the end of the pipe, the bubble that expands on the other end is going to be round. Air bubbles want to be round, if at all possible. So if you have a blowpipe, and something round expanding on the end of it. That means that the shape that it's expanding into, if you wanted an even thickness, needs to basically be round as well. About as long as it is wide and with a real uniform shape to it that matches that bubble that's going to fill it up. You have this, you'll get it, tend to get it, uh, you know, an even thickness bubble. If you have anything that's other than this, for example, if you roll your glass out real long before you put a bubble into it, you'll have a thin area and a thick area. And that's also true if you set the glass up so it's too short. So if you have a bubble and you hold it up on itself and it really squats back so it's much wider than it is long, then your bubble will have a thin bottom and thick sides. Anything that you have that deviates from this uniform uh, thing, if you have points or sharp edges or whatever it is, will create thick areas and thin areas. So once you get a uniform temperature, you have to look at that mass of glass and ask yourself whether or not it's the right proportions for your bubble to fill it up properly. And then based on little tiny differences that you have, whether it's shorter or longer, you can really control exactly how that bubble is blowing out. So here's a couple quick demonstrations of this in action. I'll make two starter bubbles, one of which I'll roll out long so it's thin right next to the pipe. Another one I'll set up squat so it gets thin on the tip. Then I'll gather on them blow into them, and we'll see if we get the same result. So if I make a, uh, a setup that's longer than it is wide, and I blow it thin at the top of the pipe, so I have that reservoir of thickness, and really let it cool down so that I can take a gather on it, even if I evenly coat this material here, it's not going to heat up evenly. That thinner part is going to heat up faster. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. I'll try to get an even uh, gather on this whole thing. And then when I blow into it, you'll see anything but an even expansion. I'll take what is more or less a uniform gather. Oh, the shape of your gather is going to uh, play a big role as well. So there it is, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's colder there than it is right next to the pipe. If I blow, you're 
you're going to get a bubble that mimics that. Very, very thick at the bottom, very thin and hot at the top. Yeah. I set up a shape. I let it squat up a lot. And when I put the air into this, you know what's going to happen. It's going to get thin on the bottom, stay really thick on the sides. Roll that out. So if this is what your starter bubble looks like, and you take a gather on it, even if your gather is completely even so that new fresh hot glass is like evenly, you know, uh, heating up what you have right here, the result is going to be far from even. Because that, th that tip is going to heat up a lot faster than the material right next to the pipe. And the colder that you let this get before you gather on it, the more you're going to see this effect. Well, if I take a gather here and I evenly coat this bubble with clear, doesn't really matter how uniform my gather is, the result is not going to be even. So if you find yourself really struggling with, let's say, thin bottoms and thick lips, this might very well be the, the cause. So I'll go ahead and blow into it here, but hopefully we all know what's going to happen. So I've got this paper thin bottom and super thick lip. It's really thick up there and really thin down there. Hope you can catch that on the camera. So you can fix this problem, for example, by marvering the bottom a bunch and like taking a bunch of heats and really trying to drive heat up in that neck, you know. But but in that case, you're, you're kind of using the tools. You're using the marver in the wrong way. You're using it to, to, to win a battle that should have been won elsewhere, won long before. For example, with adjusting the shape of your, uh, your starter bubble. And that little tweak, that little detail about just how that bubble is blown out can have humongous consequences with regards to how easy it is for you to, to make more demanding, more complex pieces. So I hope those two videos help make a good case for the importance of the starter bubble and this idea that the details of what we have early on can affect everything else that comes afterwards. I think it's a good place to start with the starter bubble, thinking about it in those terms of thin areas and thick areas, and what will help you get there is this idea, this realization that if you have even heat and even shape, then you'll end up with sort of even wall thickness. But that is, uh, there is of course a lot more to be said about starter bubbles. A lot more than like a you know 20 minute video can uh, can really articulate, but I will be making more videos that delve into um, deeper into this subject and also approach it maybe from different angles. So make sure you sign up for the mailing list, and I'll let you know when those videos are online. But before I leave you today, I wanted to just uh, give a nod towards uh, a little bit deeper of a thought about the connection between heat and shape. It'll maybe help you understand how to deal with it when you end up with some situation that you don't really want or if you get some sort of anomalous result that doesn't quite fit this idea of you know, even shape, even bubble. You might end up with even thickness, for example, when your setup is far from even. And the understanding there of, of like how you can get that sort of result has to do with really, really understanding heat and shape as two sides of the same coin. So let's say you end up with um, something that goes from like you know, thinner to thicker and like a real uneven shape maybe exaggeration here, but the idea is if you end up with something like this, then are you sunk? Well, maybe not, because if it's all even heat and you blow into it, you'll end up with a thin area and a thick area. But if you are able to adjust the heat so that it goes from colder to hotter in a way that's sort of balanced and in proportion to the, the shape going from thinner to thicker, then when you blow into the pipe, or you cap that bubble, you might still get an even result. And the reason why is that we know that you know, the bubble's not expanding so fast up here at the top of the pipe, but we also know that you have a lot less material to expand into. And down here, the bubble's moving faster, but you have a lot more material to blow into. So if everything is nice and balanced, when you finish blowing, you might end up with something that's totally even. And another example of that 
uh, sort of relationship that needs to exist between heat and shape is uh, maybe if you have a, a bubble that's way too short, so let's say you have a, a bubble that's kind of real squat and real wide. Well, then you would think that when you blow your, your air in there, you'll end up with a real thin tip and thick sides. And it might be the case that that'll happen. It'll start to blow thin here on the, uh, on the bottom, but it's not going to keep on blowing thinner and thinner and thinner forever. Instead, what happens is that the bubble kind of expands by degrees, potentially. And if it goes from colder at the end of the pipe to hotter right next to the pipe, well, what will happen is that the bubble might expand so it's thin at the tip initially. But if it's cold here, that material will freeze up, and then the bubble will expand. You know, as it expands further, it'll expand unevenly so that you maybe at the end of it um, end up with an even wall thickness bubble. So really understanding that heat and shape relationship lets you deal, lets you understand these sorts of issues, lets you deal with mistakes when you don't quite set the glass up the way that you want it to, and also gives you uh, other avenues for setting your bubble up other than what I've just talked about today in this video. Well, like I said, it's a, it's a lot to say about it, and I'm kind of you know, open up a sort of Pandora's box by talking about this here at the end of the video, but that's about where I want to stop today and just leave you with those thoughts, leave you to experiment with them yourself in the hot shop and um, learn from those, uh, those experiments. I hope this video, though, gave you some guidance and uh, some ideas about how you might approach the starter bubble and at least cement it in your mind that they are an incredibly important part of the process. As always, I'd love to hear what you think, so shoot me an email with any questions or comments any requests for other videos, things like that. And if you also want to know more about these issues of heat and shape and timing and other fundamental forces that work their way into glass like gravity and how you're spinning the pipe and all kinds of things like that, then check out Understanding Hot Glass, a series of videos I made that really delve deep into these issues, much deeper than I can in this little video, and will give you a more complete understanding that you can use to really shape the results that you want next time you're in the hot shop. Um, as always, thanks very much for watching, and best of luck in the hot shop.